For USCFootball.com, I'm Keely Orr here with Shotgun Spratling for instant analysis of USC's 14th and final practice of its 2021 fall camp. We're back in the Coliseum today for USC's second scrimmage of camp. And we got to talk to Clay Hilton after practice, and he said he thought today was better than what we saw last Saturday. And Shotgun, I think we agree with that assessment. Yeah, I definitely would concur with that. Uh, last Saturday wasn't very good, and I thought today was a much better day of work. First of all, not just getting the twos and threes reps with ones, kind of just trying to determine some of those position battles. I think we got some clarity there. Um, and I just thought the offensive rhythm was a little bit better. And I think Clay Helton mentioned that as well. Just the offense was able to move the ball a little bit more consistent. It wasn't just one explosive play and then that was it. You know, they were able to pick up some third downs. They ran the ball a little bit and were able to pick up some short yardage situations. So I thought overall the offense looked a little bit better. And I think that starts with the offensive line. The offensive line, you know, has continued to make some small, small, steps, small strides, and just you seeing better protection for the quarterbacks as they're throwing the ball, just not being constantly under harassment from the, the minute that they you know step back and catch the ball from the center. So I think that was some, some big improvements there. Uh, the defense came up with some big-time plays as well. There were three interceptions, so it was a little bit of an up-and-down day. It was a little bit even day back and forth. Uh, the, the offense had four touchdowns and, and a couple of two-point conversions, and the defense was able to get some turnovers as well. So you know, back-and-forth action, but just much better and much more, inter, much more energy today and maybe it was because they were in their game uniforms and yeah. that always adds to it you know getting to put them on the the pristine whites for the def defense for the first time um, you know for those freshmen especially getting out there and we, we saw some different guys dress and we thought maybe we see Gary Bryant back or Keontae Ingram or Darwin Barlow all those guys are still just a little bit behind Clay Helton said they should get a lot of reps next week um, so that's a positive development as well to come out of this but the guys that were in there you know I, I thought that it was it was a much better day of work than it was last Saturday. Mm -hmm. One of our main criticisms last week was that we didn't see much of Keaton Slovis. Well, we saw more of him today. First off, how was his play? And then speaking of the backup quarterbacks, Miller Moss and Jackson Dart, it seems like, correct me if I'm wrong, it seems like Jackson Dart has the edge over Miller right now. So the first week we saw Miller Moss get the majority of the first second team reps. You know, the first time the second team goes out there, he would be with them. This week it was Jackson Dart pretty much the entire time. And Jackson Dart had a, you know, threw a couple, three touchdowns last week in the scrimmage. This week he has a couple touchdown passes as well. I believe at least one um, to, to, to Keenan Kristen in, in the, the flats and being able to, to run up the sideline. But, you know, Miller Moss, he had an interception, Jackson Dart had an interception, and Keaton Slowis had an interception. So they all had a, you know, were equal in that that way. Miller Mosses did get returned by his, you know, his high school roommate, uh, Jalen Smith, um, Bishop Alamany teammate, who took it back to the house. And, uh, you know, I don't know if, if Jalen Smith felt bad that, you know, he was picking off Miller because we did see him a little sick afterwards throwing up on the sideline. Uh, but, you know, to see a freshman make a big play like that and, you know, be under the weather a little bit was impressive there. But the quarterbacks overall, I think Keaton got the work he needed to get. That was the biggest thing for me. He was connecting with different receivers. You know, Drake London was kind of limited today. You know, he didn't keep him out the entire practice. You know, he was banged up a little bit this week. But they got him in there and got him some reps in the couple of drives that he was in. I think that was important. Rather than him just going out there and just running a couple routes and not getting the ball thrown to him, they got the ball in his hands. He was able to do his thing. You say, okay, we know what Drake Lennon can do now. We've seen him actually get some work. Rather than last week when Keaton Slow was in there, didn't feel like he really got you know that full lather going, as Clay Helton <laughs> likes to, to put it. Um, so, you know, Keaton Slovis was able to connect with Drake London early, but then started hitting other receivers. You saw Taj Washington have a big day today. You know, Keaton Slow was connecting with him on, on some different types of passes. You know, John Jackson had a big, beautiful one had a touchdown, kind of pulling the ball into himself in the end zone um, for a 20-yarder, I believe, a, a fade up the right side. Uh, and then also some of the tight ends got involved. Uh, Eric Cromanhook, Jude Wolf got some yeah. catches from, from Keaton Slovis. I believe Jude Wolf had a touchdown catch from Keaton Slovis on, on a short, short yardage situation down by the goal line. So different guys getting to work with Keaton Slovis and didn't feel like the ball was being thrown in different areas where the receivers weren't on the same page. And maybe that goes back to Keaton Slovis working with some of those guys after practice this week, seeing him work with Drake London and Joseph Manjack. So I think he had a much better day of work today and feel a little bit more confident about where he's at versus where he was last week coming in after the scrimmage. And like you said, Jackson Dart, Again, taking the first reps with, his, with the twos this week and continue that today. And, you know, he had a pretty good day today. So I, I feel like he's taking a step forward, even though I think overall, I think we we believe, at least I believe, that Miller Moss has had a better fall camp. But it just feels yeah. like Jackson Dart has been giving kind of the keys to the reins so far with the twos. We'll see next week if suddenly the third week they switch things up as they go into mock game week, start preparing for San Jose State. We'll see who gets those reps with the twos and who's working with the scout team. Yep.
We'll see indeed. As Shotgun alluded to, uh, Clay Hilton said after practice that Drake London has been dealing with an ankle issue this week. So that's why he was only in a couple series and then was pulled. We actually saw the conversation that Clay Hilton had with Drake London and, and Clay Hilton said he didn't really want to do it, but he came out. But Hilton overall didn't seem concerned about that ankle issue. Uh, but as far as the, the other receiving options outside of London, I thought Taj Washington had a day that he needed to have given the inconsistency uh, issues we've seen kind of the last couple of weeks or last couple of practices. And Clay Hilton himself said he had a hell of a day, Taj Washington. So, I mean, as far as receiving options outside of Drake London, what are you taking away from that? Yeah, I think Kyle Ford had a, had a couple nice catches as well. So you know he had some you know some confidence gaining catches. Drake, uh, Taj Washington catching the ball short and taking it long. He had multiple 20 yard plus receptions. He had a back to back at one point on just short throws where he made one guy miss and then was up the sideline showing off that speed. We've seen him in the return game as well. You know, kind of popping out for you know a, a, an explosive return in, in some of the things they were doing. So I, I think it was a big day for him, and hopefully that is something that he can build on and go forward after he. You know, had a really strong start and then struggled a little bit the, this week of practice to finish this the scrimmage really strong. I think it's really big for him because I think he's one of the guys they really want to tip, stay, take that step forward and become one of those secondary options besides Drake London. Now, as far as USC's run game goes, we saw mostly Brandon Campbell and Keenan Christen today. We did see a couple series from Avai Malapai, but he was pulled since he is a veteran. You specifically asked Clay Hilton what he saw today from those, those two running backs, and what do you have to say? You know, I think the run game, we didn't see a ton of opportunities for the run game, but they were very much the situations they needed. You know, down by the goal line, could they run the ball? Third uh, third and short situations. Vavai Malapai only had one carry that I can remember, and that was a third and two, and he picked it up. And I think that was the biggest thing is, you know, and that's what Clay Helton said. He said, we saw some explosive plays, which you saw from Keenan Christen. I think he had a 40-plus yard run. Um, but you also saw, and he said that they were also efficient in their short yardage situation. So seeing Vavai Malapai pick up that third down on the very first drive but then also when they got into the red zone and they got down by the goal line could they run the ball they got stuffed one time you know on a couple plays but then they bounced back from that and they were able to get a couple of, of touchdowns down around the two or three yard line they picked up a two-point conversion with a run play as well so I, I think that it shows that the run game is making strides and I think that again that goes back to the offensive line that it continues to make some strides going forward with the work that Clay McGuire is doing with that group so I, I think that I feel a little bit better about where they were than they were at least last week uh, and where they were kind of coming into the fall camp, and especially when the fact that you can add in Keontae Ingram and Darwin Barlow. Yeah. So we don't know too much about what the, the group can do just as far as making guys miss and all those type of things and who's going to be the starter. But the fact that they were able to pick up some short yard situations, that tells you there's some holes. It wasn't just, you know, guys breaking four or five tackles like it has had to yeah. been in the past. So, you know, I thought Keenan Christen had a huge day for him. And Clay Helton said he almost had around 100 yards. Clay Helton said that, you know, he's a guy that you saw that 10.3 speed ability, the 10.3 that he can run the 100 meters. He said he saw that on the field today and that he's going to be a guy that continue to have to find ways to, to get involved and get the ball in his hands because of how that blazing speed and how unique he is. Mm -hmm. As far as USC's offensive line and the tackle competition, we saw what we've seen this week, Cortland Ford at left tackle and Jonah Monheim at right tackle. Now, Shotgun, Clay Hilton had a, a statement that you and I disagreed on what it actually meant. What was your takeaway? Clay Hilton said that they've pretty much settled on the right and left. By that, I believe he means that they've settled on who is going to be playing on the right side, who's going to be playing on the left side. Now, have they settled on the, the winners of those battles? I don't think so. You interpret it a little bit differently. I think, obviously, Cortland Ford, the guy that he's battling with right now with Casey Collier not out. We got an update on Casey Collier. Clay Helton said he's with the team. He, you know, he came back to practice on Monday, but we haven't seen him the rest of the week. He said he's with the team. They had a, a walkthrough yesterday in the Coliseum at night. He said he was with them there. But they've, they've got him back in the weight room. He said he lost a little weight when he went home, so they're trying to you know, get him, you know, strengthen up his frame and get him back in board and, and you know, get him back in the mix there. But basically, Cortland Ford is kind of the only guy battling at the left tackle spot right now because all we saw this week was Jonah Monheim and Jalen McKenzie at right tackle. So I think that tells you that those two guys are battling on the right side while Cortland Ford is locked at the left side. Now, of that battle, Jonah Monheim has gotten the first team reps the majority of the time this week. I think it will come down to the watching this game, this scrimmage film for the coaches and then deciding where they want to go from there. But I would say, at least coming into the scrimmage, that Monheim had the advantage. You interpreted it a little bit differently. You thought that, you know, he was kind of saying that we've settled on who is going to be in that position being Monheim and Ford. But I, I think that 
I think the scrimmage may have a little bit to say about it too. Sure, that's a fair assessment. That's why it could be either way. We'll, <laughs> we'll put a question mark there. But as far as the battle on the other side of the ball, inside linebacker, we saw a three-man rotation with Raylan Goforth, Raymond Scott, and Kanai Malga. It seems like that will probably be a three-man rotation going into the season. I don't feel like we, they settled that out yet. I mean, we saw a lot of rotation, both at the linebacker position, both at the safety positions. I feel like they were trying some things, trying to see who works well together. How do they, you know, how are they going to handle different scenarios and stuff there? But I think what we've seen so far is that there hasn't been a solidified. These two guys are getting all the first two reps, and the third guy's kind of, you know, in the back. So that tells me that they're probably going to do it. And the fact that that Todd Orlando has talked about how they have different skill sets, and the fact that Kanai Malga is a first and second down guy who's working on being a third down guy, who's you know going to be in the middle. Raymond Scott is a guy that goes sideline to sideline, is a guy that's better suited for the outside, and Raylan Goforth can kind of fill both of those spots. So I think that because that they're different, then I think you'll see a little bit of rotation. They want to try to get all those guys. I thought Raymond Scott had a pretty good day today as well. You know, a nice open field tackle on Keenan Kristen, um, which is very difficult to do, as Rajon Davis found out as he missed one of the tackles that led to that 40-yard run as well. Mm -hmm. Now, as far as uh, the three interceptions you mentioned earlier, it was from a vet that we know can do that, and two younger faces today. Yeah, Isaiah Polamau got Keaton Slovis. Keaton Slovis rolling out to his right. Isaiah Polamau steps in front of a tight end, uh, takes it, you know, it's just a slow developing play and just a veteran move, just being able to read what the, the options are on that side of the field and know, okay, I can gamble and go take this because there wasn't an option behind him. So great play by Isaiah Polamau there. And then the two young guys, we talked a little bit about Jalen Smith. He stepped in front of maybe a tight end or a receiver over the middle. Um, and, you know, Miller Moss was getting pressured and threw it off platform. You know, made it a little bit, that's a freshman mistake from him. Uh, and Jalen Smith took advantage and took it to the house. And then the other one was Prophet Brown. Nice, you know, Jackson Dart, I, you know, as he threw the ball, I said, oh, that's a nice ball. And Prophet Brown goes and gets it, you know, high pointed it better than the receiver. And I believe it was Kyle Ford over there, who's a guy that's been making DBs kind of, uh, you, you know, feel his, feel his size and his strength <laughs> on some of those jump ball type of situations. So Prophet Brown, really nice play from him. A guy that I think we've seen take some big strides this fall camp. Now, I don't know if he's going to be in the mix anywhere this season, but great to see him making those strides early because he's a guy that played, you know, running back primarily in high school and then played some safety as well. So it wasn't a ton of cornerbacks. So seeing him make those big strides with Dante Williams, I think is really important. So big play from him, big play from Jalen Smith. And like you said, a veteran, Isaiah Paul Mal, just reading it, reading a veteran quarterback and knowing what he can do and what he can't do on a play and taking advantage. Mm -hmm. We noticed last Saturday, or we noted that Parker Lewis had some consistency issues. Well, that continued again today, and I asked Clay Helton about it if he was concerned, and he didn't seem concerned. He said he's a talented kid, and he knows that he will, will get it figured out. But for you, Shaka, you seemed a little bit concerned by that. Well, you look at it, who got the first team reps? It wasn't Parker Lewis. When they went out for field goal, Alex Stadhouse got the first team reps, and he was more consistent. Now, they're giving Parker Lewis reps, and I think they're trying to build that confidence back up. And I think that's what it is right now, just a little bit of a mental hurdle. Got to get over it. Uh, he did knock down, a, I believe, a 45-yarder. Uh, but the last kick of the field goal portion was a 49-yard attempt from Alex Stadhouse, and he knocked it straight through. Uh, he doesn't have a, the strong of a, as strong of a leg as Parker Lewis, but he's been more consistent right now. So that's a position battle to watch that we didn't think we would be a yeah. position battle coming into the fall. Yeah. Now, as far as returnees, the most notable one was Jamar Sakona. He wasn't in full pads, but he was in shoulder pads and getting some work in individual reps. Uh, he's a guy who will be important this year for USC's uh, defensive line depth. Yeah, and I didn't get a chance to really focus on the defensive tackles today, but Stanley Tafu, we got the very first team reps uh, at the defensive tackle position. We'll see how quickly Sakona can make up some ground. You know, big loss for him to lose this week. You know, yeah. Clay Helton talked about being the most physical week, and for a de defensive tackle, that's what you need to prove is that I can be physical. I can be a guy that can be a tank in the middle of the line. So Jamar's kind of missed out on a big week for for that position battle. So how quickly can he catch up to get into that rotation potentially with Kobe Pepe and some of those other guys that are in the mix there. So that was one guy that, that came back. Another guy that I did note was Isaac Taylor Stewart. Yeah. We got to see him back on the field. Uh, so that's a positive development there, especially with Joshua Jackson still out right now. Now, as I mentioned at the top, this is technically the conclusion of USC's 2021 fall camp. Shotgun, you've seen a lot of fall camps. How would this one compare to the rest you've seen? 
I'm no Dan Weber when it comes to viewing <laughs> fall camps, uh, but you know, I, I think I, I look back to maybe that 2016 season when they were going to play Alabama, and you looked at it and you just went, "This is not good. This is not going to go well." Just the energy wasn't there. I feel like they attacked areas of need really well. So the short yardage situation, seeing today, they were able to pick up some of those uh, with the offensive line, seeing it improve steadily over the the, the fall camp, and you know the impact that Clay McGuire is having there. I think, and just the position battles. You're not going into the first game going. Who's going to be the quarterback? Who's going to be this guy? Who's going to be the left tackle? I feel like those things are being established now, and you'll have some time for that offensive line to kind of congeal and be able to, to work together this last couple of weeks going in. Now, they will have one more competitive practice that maybe determine some of those position battles. Clay Helton said that they will have a full pad practice on Tuesday. They have two of those remaining before, you know, in their preseason. One of those will be the Tuesday of their game week, but the one on Tuesday will be the last one, be competitive periods, evaluation uh, for some of those position battles. And then Wednesday, he said, they will start on San Jose State prep. So I think that we'll see what happens on Tuesday and see where people are lining up to see how much this, this scrimmage had an impact. But I think they took advantage of what they could do, what the NCAA would allow. Obviously, the NCAA took away some of the padded practices, more acclimation period, You know, took away some of the drills they were allowed to do, some of the physical drills. So I think USC, they did some things that were different. They changed up the practice plans occasionally. When they saw that last – Saturday scrimmage wasn't very good. On Monday, they came back and said, scrap the 7-on-7, seven seven, let's go live periods. So I think just being able to adapt was a lot better than what we've seen from USC in the past. Mm -hmm. All righty, Shocker, any final thoughts before we wrap this one up? I did want to highlight one of the plays. You know, the tight ends I thought had a pretty good day today. Eric Kromanuk had a catch. Jude Wolf had a, had a touchdown catch. But Michael Trigg, again, makes another fantastic catch on a third and, like, 18 play over the middle seam route. He gets in between the, the linebacker and the safety, goes up over the linebacker to make a catch. Good throw from Jackson Dart as well there. But the kid just continues to make plays. I think it's going to be hard for him to, to keep him off the field in some form or fashion. Now, where is he at in the playbook and all those things? Clay Helton said that's one of the things they're still working on with him but I think you got to find a way he's a playmaker and he continues to make plays out there yeah and it's worth noting he made that play after getting banged up he w lined up with like a limp arm <laughs> it looked like he hurt his shoulder a little bit and they went in and made that play yeah you wonder if maybe he's a little deking of the the, the linebackers there <laughs> you know oh yeah I'm hurt a little bit watch this and he goes and makes <laughs> a play no he just he, he's been fabulous this spring camp and I thought it was really interesting the last thing that we saw as we were exiting the Coliseum him Corey Foreman and Jackson Dart, three true freshmen, were the last guys on the field. And they weren't getting any extra work, or anything, but they were just kind of, you know, Corey Foreman was getting his tape taken off, and they were staying there and hanging out together. So seeing the camaraderie of three really big-time freshmen in that in that class, you know, that they're staying extra, you know, Corey Foreman throughout fall camp, getting that extra work even when he's not in there, standing with Vic Soto, tells you some positive things from the, the recruiting class that they brought in. Mm -hmm. Maybe a glimpse of the future yep. for USC. All right, that's going to wrap it up for USC's 14th practice of fall camp for Shotgun Spratling. I'm Keely Orr. For more, check out uscfootball.com.